Hi, it's Ellis. I'm back in the Alice studio today, and as I promised, we're going to talk about Alice's story. Now, the Alice you probably know is this one. The Alice from the Tennille illustrations in the Alice in Wonderland adventure books. This is not the real Alice, but this is the Alice from the storybooks. Today I'm going to talk to you about the story of how um, Wonderland came into existence. And it involves two people, really. The first person is the author, and I'm going to show you a picture of him. This is the Reverend Charles Dodson, also known as Lewis Carroll. Um, recall I've talked about him before, but he was a professor at Oxford. He taught mathematics for his entire career. He also was a children's author. He did lots of logic puzzles, mathematical puzzles. He was interested in a lot of different things, supernatural topics. He was ordained in the Church of England, so he had a um, religious background, was brought up in religion. Um, so there's that part of the story. And there's another um, participant in the story, and that is the real girl, Alice. And that was this girl, Alice Little. And this is a photograph done by Charles Dodson. He um, was a photographer. He uh, took photographs in the early days of photography. That was one of his hobbies. He took photographs of many subjects, some of them children, some of them um, portraits of older people, um, landscapes, many, many topics. Okay, so, although this is probably the Alice you know best, and I have some more um, illustrations of Alice from the book behind me, the Tennille illustrations that are very widely known, um, I'm going to talk about the story of how Alice in Wonderland came into existence. So Dodson lived next to um, the deanery um, at Christ Church at Oxford. And he got to know the dean, his wife, and the dean's children. Alice was one of them, and the dean had several children, um, but he formed probably a, the best relationship with Alice. And he had um, a habit of taking the children for afternoons and, and spending time with them. And one afternoon in July of 1862, he took Alice, her two sisters, and his friend Robison Duckworth on a boat trip and they went off and had a picnic. And as was the custom, he entertained the children with a story. And this must have been a particularly good story because Alice asked him to write this story down. And he equivocated a little bit about writing it down. But he kind of made a promise, and over the next year, when Alice would see him, she would remind him that he had promised to write this story down. So eventually, he did end up writing the story down, and he illustrated that book, that manuscript. And in, what was it, the Christmas of 1864, actually it was November, it was a little before Christmas, he presented Alice with that manuscript, which he hand-illustrated. And... He presented her that book, and I have a facsimile of that here. So you can see this handwritten, I hope you can see it, handwritten copy in his own um, handwriting, and he illustrated this copy. And these are, the illustrations are not well known at all, because shortly thereafter we'll have a famous illustrator do the Alice illustrations, but this is a early uh, Dodson illustration of Alice. Okay, so he gifted her that, that Christmas. Dodson went on to show another friend um, this story, Alice Ad Alice's Adventures Underground, as it was originally titled, and his friend MacDonald and his children really loved the book and encouraged Dodson to get it published. And because of this encouragement, Dodson did seek out a publisher and eventually get Alice's Adventures in Wonderland published. And that's how we came to get this Alice as being the Alice we know. This is not the original girl, Alice Little. Alice Little had dark hair, and the Alice we know has blonde hair. So it's not exactly the same girl. 
But that is the story, the true story behind Alice's adventures in Wonderland. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it and um, hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.